Washington Grown is brought to you by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. And by the Washington State Department of Agriculture, supporting the viability and vitality of Washington agriculture. And by Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. There are over 300 crops grown here in Washington State, but did you know that Washington is one of the top producers of garlic in the U.S.? Here at this garlic farm, these plants are going to be turned into seed to grow more garlic. In this episode, we're talking all about Washington garlic. I'm touring Spiceology in Spokane. We take our garlic to chefs and we put it on the table at the beginning of a meeting. We just crack it open. We don't yeah. talk about it. And before you know it, the chef is like, That's so that smells good really good. Garlic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm making some special appetizers at Samara in Ballard. A great Washington Northwest kind of dish. I could eat all of that. Then I'm taking a trip to a garlic farm. That's going to last all day. <laughs> yeah. You'll find something to wash it down with later, I'm sure, at dinner. All this and more today on Washington Grown. as I am. <laughs> Come and see Christy. <laughs> it's like I can taste the sunshine. Cheers. Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh. The calories are adding up. No calories in this. Thing. You don't get to do this every day. We're in Ballard at a local hotspot known for its homey atmosphere and eye-catching dishes. Between the open flame grill and the colorful plates, at Samara, there's something for everybody. It is, everything is cooked with like a lot of love, but also just a lot of purpose. It's fun, it's just casual, but it's fabulous. You can roll in in casual clothing, but still eat like pretty luxurious food. You just feel like you're kind of embracing the whole industrial, but like fishing neighborhood of Ballard, as well as just eating really good food. Being in the dining room makes, I think, all the difference for the restaurant. Chef and owner Eric Anderson has specifically designed his restaurant so he can cook right in front of the guests. There are no secrets here, and the gorgeous food tastes as good as it looks. It's definitely very Pacific Northwest, local, ingredient-driven. We've worked with farms are in the five-acre size, smaller farms typically. All of the vegetables on the menu are from our local farms. Anything that's really highlighted is a local product. This is a special growing region. You know, this really produces amazing produce that you don't find everywhere. The food looks great. Everything that they're doing feels like they love it. The layers of flavor are so amazing. You're not going to taste anything here that you could taste anywhere else. It's a relaxed environment. There's no pretension here whatsoever. People enjoy that aspect of it. They can come for a nice meal. Uh, they can get dressed up, but it's not fussy. <laughs> Don't miss later in the show when Chef Eric and I make some very special appetizers. I was going for evenness. And it was extremely even. It was e It was even. <laughs> Walking into Spiceology in Spokane, there's no mistaking where you are. The smells of garlic powder and chili blends fill the air, reminding you that if you're looking for the highest quality spices for cooking, you're in the right place. Prior to Spiceology, I was a chef. All A lot of our team members were chefs, um, especially at the early stage. So we really wanted to focus on quality and then bringing a price that people could afford with yeah. high quality product. Tony Reed is the Senior Director of Innovation and Partnerships at Spiceology. Here, freshly ground spice is their secret sauce. You can see that, you know, it was manufactured two to three weeks prior to the chef purchasing it. Yeah. That's what I would consider our differentiator yeah. with Spiceology. And can you taste the difference? Oh, you can see it, you can smell it before you even open the jar. With our products, you're not going to have to over-season because all of the oils that, that make spices so valuable. Mm -hmm. We have 
probably the highest content that you can find out there. So you don't have to use as much product to get the flavors that you're really looking it's for. It's just, it really does smell like, you know, you just peeled a, a clove of garlic and... It goes a long right way. Right there, yeah. yeah. We take our garlic to chefs and we put it on the table at the beginning of a meeting. We just crack it open, we don't yeah. talk about it. And before you know it, the chef is like, That's that smells good. really good. Garlic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things I love are your fun labels. We created the periodic table of flavor. As you can tell, it's got the periodic table of element look. Yeah. We started this labeling concept because we wanted to get into food service and chefs have a lot of OCD. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure that, you know, that we built something to help them keep their rack organized. Sure. In addition to hand filling, Spiceology also has a brand new, fully automated production line where they fill smaller containers. By hand, we used to fill probably 3,000 jars a day with about 20 people. And I think we can get up to about 10 to 12,000 depending on the product with this line by itself oh, nice. in a half day. Now Tony's putting me to work in the hand filling room, filling containers with garlic powder. All right, so this is go. our green room. We're gonna. Our green room, yeah, that's we're why we're be, wearing green. Yeah, green. so we're gonna fill domestic garlic powder. This is a powder form, it's really fine. Uh, it kind of gets a little sticky even. So we'll grab some okay. garlic and we'll start filling over here. It smells amazing in here, doesn't it? Oh yeah, we go home smelling like garlic. I'm <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'm sure. So I see what you mean by this being like really fine. Super fine. Oh, and it smells so good. So how's my technique? I'm not going very fast, am I? Oh no, it's, with this especially, it's better to go slow because it just pops up right Yeah. There. Yeah. It, <laughs> is there an award at the end of who's the messiest? Awesome. Yay! <laughs> we'll let the experienced ones take over. <laughs> And the possibilities are endless. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of the times when I'm creating product, you know, it starts with a sauce. Any sort of liquid, I can find it in powder form or create it and make it powder. And that creates endless opportunities, like you said, to, to have the next most innovative flavor. So it makes it super fun. Hey, let's go. When I hear garlic, immediately I think of aromatics, marinades, Italian food, but I don't normally think of ice cream. Now the folks here at the Scoop in Spokane are gonna change all of that because they have an incredible recipe for garlic ice cream. Let's go check it out. Owner Jennifer Davis makes tons of different and interesting flavors of ice cream using a unique method with liquid nitrogen. So how many different flavors do you guys currently have? Well, I just got new labels made and we were up to, I think, 152. Wow. And that's just ones that we make on a regular basis. What's the motivation behind all these different flavors? You are not just a chocolate, vanilla, strawberry shop. You know, it's just inspiration. Now today, Jennifer made us a very special order. Garlic ice cream. Okay, cheers. Cheers. That's not supposed to work. <laughs> I know, but it does. But it does. That garlic isn't overpowering. I think no. that's the trick. Right. It's subtle, it's there. It just says a little high from the distance. But it's there. But it's there. It's there. That is really interesting. Isn't it? It's good. So good. <laughs> All right, it's time to take this special garlic ice cream and see what people actually think. I'm down to try it. Okay. Why not? I like garlic. I do love garlic. You do like ice cream. I do love ice cream. Maybe it works. Maybe we'll it doesn't. See. Let's find out. Let's oh, wow. That's pretty good. It's interesting. I actually like this a lot. It's really buttery, and there's kind of like a caramelized flavor. I can see it with a good Italian dinner or something, and maybe a shot of espresso. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's really good. That's a nice blend. It's not supposed to work, but it does. I could eat this on the regular. Actually, I would eat a whole cup of that. I'd probably buy it and have it at home for see? dessert. There you go. <laughs> Coming up, I'm making some very special appetizers at Samara. I was going for evenness. And it was extremely even. It was an even. It was even. <laughs> We're
We're back at Samara in Ballard. From unique flavors to eye-popping presentation, everything coming out of this kitchen will have you begging for more. They cooked everything on, on wood fire. There's this smokiness, but it doesn't overpower it. It really brings out all of these flavors. You can almost see the flavors that you're going to be tasting soon. I love the attention you have to pay with the wood fire. You can't just turn the knob and it's going to be the same heat. You have to adjust. Chef and owner Eric Anderson designed his menu around the open flame wood-burning grill. From the octopus to the bread to the locally grown vegetables, every dish touches the fire at least once. The hearth is the heart of the home, as you hear, and yeah. this is, yeah, front and center of the restaurant, and almost every ingredient touches it at some point. Where you can really roast the vegetables, we can get a good char on them without burning them through. And so you just have these layers of flavor you're able to develop. Even a, a simple piece of grilled bread on a wood-fired grill is transformed. The transparency of watching what I'm eating, how they're cooking it, and it's just art right there. You can see what they're doing. There's no secrets here. It's just so beautiful when you see the flames from the wood fire sort of, you know, licking your food really on the grill and then you get to lick it yourself. <laughs> what are you and I going to make today? Oh, well, we should try, uh, we'll make the olive tapenade okay. and then we'll make our red beets and we'll make an octopus dish. A feast? Yes. <laughs> We're being warmed up by your toasty fire back here, and we're gonna make some appetizers today, yeah, is that right? Yeah, this is in our snack section on the menu, Herbis. so we use Gaida olives, okay. and we pit them, and then we chop up onions and garlic, and we set the whole thing over the fire, that. and just let it smoke and dry out a little bit for several hours. We start by breaking some homemade aniseed crackers into quarters. Do you cook these on? You no, know, we, we have an electric oven downstairs, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we cheat a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we put a ball of the olive mixture on the crackers, then add a mixture of pickled fennel, mustard seed, chili flake, and fennel seed on top. We cut some olives and mint, then top the whole thing off with some olive oil. This is a hearty snack. I'm tempted to dig in, but we're gonna wait. Now we move on to some charred beets. So these are from a yeah, local farm? Steel wheel, they're in Falls City. Okay, so we're gonna roast these yeah, on the fire. We kind of put a little char on them like you'd see on a burnt marshmallow. While the beets roast, we add blackberries and raspberries to simple syrup and put some hazelnut butter on the side. In another bowl, we add the beets to some black locust vinegar, then pour it into the berry bowl. Next, we sprinkle some berries and hazelnuts over the top, add some lemon balm, and finally sprinkle on some edible flowers. Beautiful. <laughs> well, we'll come back for the we'll eating We'll come part. back because we have one more dish to make. Our last dish is the giant Pacific octopus. So obviously some gorgeous potatoes. Yeah, some that fingerling we have. potatoes. We've poached those with garlic and some seasoning. We put some blanched octopus onto the grill to char. While that cooks, we put the potatoes in a pan and onto the grill. When both of those are done, we add the octopus to the potatoes and toss in some pickled garlic scapes. Then we start building the dish. We first spread out a base of smoked chili aioli. I think it needs more mayonnaise. Oh, I see. I was going for evenness. And it was extremely even. It was, e it was even. <laughs> We top the whole thing off with Italian parsley, pickled orange zest, and chive blossoms. Now it's time for the feast. First off, the olive tapenade. I can really taste the smokiness. That's really good. I didn't expect that. That kind of flavor right? from it. Yeah. Up next, the charred beets. This is such a beautiful dish. I love beets. And that is so good. I could eat all of that. But we still have one more dish to go. Finally, the octopus and potatoes. The octopus is a very mild flavor, and so it's not gonna have like a big punch, and that's why we yeah. have the garlic pickles, the aioli, all of those things are really bringing yeah. life to the dish. A great Washington Northwest kind of dish. For more restaurants, recipes, farms, and fun, visit wagrone.com. I'm just north of Pasco, usually known as potato country. But today, this four-wheeler isn't taking us on a ride around a potato field. We're visiting one of Washington's lesser known crops, garlic. Barrett Tomlinson grows garlic for seed, and for him, it's both challenging and fun. It's not a widely cultivated crop in the area, so there's minimal competition. You can focus on doing a good job. Growing garlic isn't as simple as planting a seed. Instead, you plant garlic cloves. We get cracked garlic that started out as a whole bowl. It goes down a cracking line, 
that takes the bulb down to the size of the largest clove, and that's what we plant. And those individual cloves will generate another bulb. It ultimately ends up in California for their seed stock, which they make powder out of it. So when we're putting garlic powder in our spaghetti sauce. Yeah, or you buy a bag of potato chips that might have garlic in it. Yeah. yeah. Is this garlic a certain type? It is a soft neck California early. That white bulb that you'd see in the store, that's what this is. Oh, okay. What stage are they at right now? They are in bulbing stage. Bulbing stage. Yes. Creating what most people know to be garlic. So, oh, wow. you really those, smell that. oh yeah, very potent. There's a clove, uh -huh. clove, clove. I see, so the little circles kind of in there. Yeah, the, the dots. Airport, the dots. The buttons. So and these become apart. a lot more paper-like. Right. To, you know, someone who doesn't know anything about garlic, this looks like a big green onion. It does, right? it does, yep. And so. people probably confuse your field for that all the time. They, they have confuse it for many things, yeah. <laughs> What does it taste like at this stage? I can smell the garlic. Does it taste like garlic well, right now? Well, <laughs> I think the best way to answer that would be for you to try it. Now what do I do? Just, just, lick, just it? lick it. It's not a burning hot, but it's it's a spicy yeah. garlic hot. It is. Okay, now it's slow burn mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. <laughs> That's gonna last all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll find something to wash it down with later, I'm sure, at <laughs> dinner. I'm not a doctor, but... Mm -hmm. They say, you know, blood pressure, cholesterol, things like that, it can benefit. It's several things. It's a health food, it's a super food, it's a junk food. So it covers all aspects. And of course I had to ask him what his favorite way to eat garlic was. My favorite way to eat garlic is either in salsa or on the barbecue, cut the top out of it, put butter or olive oil in it and cook it. Until it gets yeah. kind of soft and that, yeah. That's my favorite way. Good stuff. Or just traditional garlic bread. I like that too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Pretty much anything with garlic. Yeah. That's the top. <laughs> nice. What compound gives garlic its spicy flavor? I'll have the answer for you after the break. Coming up, Val's learning how one orchard is using drip irrigation to conserve water. We're playing even a small part in, in helping conserve water in the state of Washington. And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying out some creamy garlic pasta. The compound that gives garlic its spicy flavor is Allison. Garlic is a wonderful crop to grow at home. It takes up very little space and it doesn't require a lot of work. Garlic wants to be weeded and mulched. You need about six inches of mulch over the top of your garlic when you plant it, which will be in late October. My rule of thumb is to plant it at Halloween and then it comes out in the summertime. In the springtime, it will shoot up. So in Eastern Washington, it's May right now. And this is what my garlic looks like today. So you can see that we've had a lot of growth over the last couple of months. In the fall, you'll see some tiny green nubbins coming up out of the soil after you plant your garlic. Mulch your garlic really well. And then the snow, if it's snowy where you live, will act as an insulator on your garlic. There are two types of garlic that are most common to plant. Soft neck, which yields a large bulb and a braidable stem. And the other variety is hard neck. You get a double crop on that because you get scapes from hard neck garlic and you also get the garlic bulb at the end. Scapes are delicious and have the consistency of a green bean and taste like spicy raw garlic. This is what my garlic looks like right now. So you can see that it doesn't have a developed bulb yet, but in two months, this will be a fully developed head of garlic. Garlic is ready to harvest when the greens have died back and turned brown. You can pull away some of the soil and see that the bulb has developed and it looks papery like what you would find in the grocery store. At that point, it's considered cured and it's ready for storage. You can use that garlic for the rest of the year in all of your favorite recipes, and then it stores really well, so you'll have garlic that you grew yourself for the rest of the year. We're in Benton County visiting the newest orchard for Blue Gin Farms, where Nestor Garcia and his family have worked with the Benton Conservation District to update their farm to conserve our most precious resource. You went from K-line irrigation to drip line. 
That's Why? Right. The way they originally irrigated here was half of the land was going to be just flood irrigated. K-line irrigation is a common watering system that uses a series of guided sprinkler pods to lightly water the surface area of the field. As we were analyzing the project of growing apples, the, the water requirements for apples were much less and using K-lines first will be not feasible to have to move in inside the orchard and then the drip irrigation offered target watering for the uh -huh. trees so it helped us conserve water and use it where we need it. Benton County is located in an arid climate, making resources like water far more important. The drip irrigation that he chose, you know, it allows him to be very precise with the water that he's putting on. Melissa Pierce is a resource conservationist with Benton County Conservation District. Melissa and her team work with farmers who want to conserve resources but may not have the means to do so. That's kind of where conservation districts come into play. They may want to conserve water, but it can be difficult, risky, and expensive to take those steps. And, you know, we come into play and help with funding those projects. And, you know, we also provide technical assistance. Conserving water helps do more than just saving water. Rachel Little, an educator with the conservation district, tells me it protects a greater system. The farms and orchards are really closely connected to the river. Historically, we have had problems with the water quality in our river, specifically because of what's been coming off of the farm fields. When too much water is applied to the farm fields, that water runs across the field. It robs the farmer from that precious resource mm -hmm. of topsoil. Mm -hmm. And then any residual chemicals mm -hmm. that are attached to those particles, they get washed into the river. We're playing even a small part in, in helping conserve water in the state of Washington. Is it a process that you would recommend to others? Yes, I would definitely recommend others to at least look into it. It is a game changer for us. It helped us out tremendously. We're in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and we get to taste some wonderful recipes uh, from allrecipes.com. And I got my taste testers with me today. I have Tomas, Hello. thanks for being here. Hey everybody. Yes, my partner in crime. My other partner in crime over here is Chef Laurent. Hello everyone. This was the garlic episode. And of course, garlic is kind of a mainstay in cooking. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when, when you have a, uh, a customer who asks, you know, oh, I have an allergy and you, you're wondering why. And if they say onions or garlic, you're like, oh, well, yeah. what can I feed you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what you know? can I feed you? <laughs> and the way you cook it changes completely the, the, the flavor of the garlic. And it's, it's very interesting. Right, whether it's spicy or sweet, exactly. all just yeah. how you prepare it. Exactly. You, you were talking about the ice cream you ate, uh, Thomas. And I, I bet it's garlic a sweet, ice cream. sweet, garlic that has yeah. been poached because it's sweeter. It was amazing. You know, I recently just fell in love with a, a white chocolate truffle raspberry ice cream and I thought that would be the end all be all. And then I discover, <laughs> and then I discover garlic ice cream that was made by Scoop and they had this black garlic and you would think that it'd be overpowering and it would keep vampires away, but that's not the case. It was so <laughs> delicate and subtle and sweet and I really enjoyed it. I mean, you owe it to yourself to try it just to say, I've had garlic yeah, ice cream. So black garlic. Now, what is that? Yes, exactly? it is fermented garlic. Okay. Uh, basically, you, you leave it uh, at a temperature between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit for like a, a month. It is sweeter. It has a very particular flavor. Uh, it's, it's completely different, but it's extremely good for you. It's fermented, so it's good, good for pro, pro, probiotics. probiotics yep, yeah, exactly. And uh, it's, a, it's a different, uh, different flavor. So it was healthy too, Tomas. <laughs> I guess I should have got a bowl instead of <laughs> instead of garlic a garlic ice cream. Who knew? So we're gonna make creamy garlic pasta. Oh, I mean, very nice. Garlic and pasta kind of go hand in hand. It seems pasta, like pasta, right? garlic, cream. Yeah, it's gonna be hard not to like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out how it's made.
I can smell the garlic. Yeah, it's right, right? there. <laughs> My only question is, why did I get so little? I know. <laughs> Dinky little plates. What were they thinking? It's not strong. It's not burning kind of uh, flavor like garlic, uh, raw garlic can be. So if you cook it slowly and you poach it, basically, you saute it slowly, you, you add your, your chicken stock, I think there is in, in the recipe. Basically, you poach the garlic and you, you don't, you create something that is more sweet, more tender than uh, just pure raw garlic. And I, I like it. And you ate all yours, I, all gone. Well, like I said, when I saw it, like, well, how come I didn't get more than that? <laughs> Very good. I better yeah. eat faster. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely have a lot of fun on this show, whether we're eating or playing or hanging out with farmers. And uh, on our uh, social media pages, Facebook and Instagram, uh, oftentimes they'll post some fun behind the scenes kind of things uh, that give you like a little bit of a you know, peek at, at the fun that we're having. Yes, so, tell, to tell us on social media what you would add to this uh, recipe to make it your own and uh, maybe uh, next time it will be featured on our show. Right, so take a look. We welcome your comments. Find us on Instagram and Facebook and you can find the recipe for this pasta on walkroom.com. The next time you smell that awesome garlic aroma coming from your kitchen, think of all the love and care that went into growing that garlic to make your dinner so special. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.